This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean, Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They are a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that they, it, your coffee is freshly roasted after you ordered. They are fair trade certified, USD organic, and integrity is their core value. Uh, check out all the great coffee selections they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Uh, and just uh, before we get started, just want to throw out there that uh, Iron Bean is leaving at the end of the month. Uh, so we are uh, actively seeking new sponsors. So uh, if anyone would like to sponsor, advertise on the Sloopcast, just uh, sloopcast at gmail.com. That is sloopcast at gmail.com. All right. Uh, this is the super secret. I was really waiting for you to sort of break off the part where we start talking just for the YouTube audience. Uh, and Austin says he's sponsoring the Sloopcast next month. Are are you signing up for that uh, that secret nomad deal? Oh, okay, that's good. That'll help. But you know, wanna. What one of those corporate sponsors? <laughs> they pay twice as much. <laughs> all right, Kyle. Uh, all right, are 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 you okay? <laughs> You're are you refusing to talk during the secret section of the podcast? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I was just letting you do. I was letting you do your own, your own thing here. So. <laughs> See, uh, people, people make fun. People make fun of me because I talk too much. You don't let Kyle talk enough. Uh, Jared talks most of the time. I kept trying to let him talk. I kept trying. Uh, hey, spring, spring's here. <laughs> Let's start the show. All right. We've got Robert back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing this lovely spring day? Is it spring now? It is spring now. Today, as we're recording, it is the first day of spring. What? Does that, does that day move around? Because sometimes I feel like it's on the 20th or the 21st or the 22nd. Like, I really want it to be like just a singular day. Austin like says Easter, yes. Just like Easter. Well, that's different. That's because the Romans changed the calendars and that made things weird. Um, but Austin says yes, it moves. Yeah. All right, Jared. Is this a solstice? Because there's a solstice and then there's an equinox. So this this one's a solstice. So I think mm -hmm. I remembered that because it's spring solstice. It's alliteration. Equinox yeah. is winter. Uh all right, Jared, okay. this is maybe our last Sloop Hoops episode. Uh, for spoilers. Uh, <laughs> for uh, a while here. For a while. <laughs> yeah, you finished that sentence, Kyle. For a while. Yeah, for a while here. So, all right. Um, we'll just jump right into it here. Uh, since last we talked, I was getting ready for the um, NCAA tournament where they are going to take on Loyola Chicago Ramblers or more known as the sister jeans, the fighting sister jeans here. Uh, I think there was a lot of Buckeye fans going into this game, just very hesitant, especially what seeing from what we saw from the Buckeyes towards the end of the season, where they lost four of their last five games. Just what there weren't a lot of high hopes here, but hey, the Buckeyes fought tooth and nail here with key and young being in this game here. And I think that really made the difference. And uh, first part so, of yeah. the game there, I think, I think young scored like seven of their first 10 points or something like that. Young really got it going at, to a degree of what uh, 
getting it going really meant for for these teams because both teams shot terribly. Uh, Loyola shot under 27% and Ohio State shot just under 42% for the game here. But man, what a low scoring game. 54-41 here for the Buckeyes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Holtman literally apologizes at halftime for, uh, or no, was it the end of the game for the, uh, I, I just, for the lack of entertainment, I guess I hesitate saying that I hate and basketball is different. Okay. Just let me acknowledge basketball is different, but I, I hate the thing that people do in football where they insinuate that a high scoring game is an entertaining game and that a low scoring game is a boring game. That that's a, that's a big peeve of mine. I, I do not, I, I like, I, I think, I think it is equally boring. I believe it is equally boring when like touchdowns or points or whatever are, are too cheap. I don't like it when, when points are too cheap. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you look at the game here. I, I wish I had the first half stats. Cause the first half was so, ugh, it was, it was such a terrible game there. It wasn't so much that, yeah, I mean, yeah, both teams played really good defense, but Ohio State one for fifteen from behind a three, six percent from three yeah. point land here. And I Man. and I don't want to. Ohio State actually played. I'm sorry. Let's you know no 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 Kyle. Let's let that hang there for a second. Six point seven percent behind the three point arc. The hell was that? I just had a weird little music something or other. I wonder if that went through on the recording. Um, but yeah, the, no, well, they, the, the folks are saying no. Uh, the, yeah, it was just a terrible, terrible, terrible shooting day for both teams. Absolutely horrendous shooting day. Um, and that, Loyola is a, a high scoring team. That, that was sort of the weird part, right? Um, they came well, in and, cold. They came in also, real, real cold. But Ohio also, State was also playing really good defense. As Kyle pointed out before, it was great to have both Zed Key and Kyle Young back for this game. I mean, Loyola coming into this game was one of, has a really stout defense here. And we saw that in the first half. Ohio State couldn't get it inside the paint. They were struggling to shoot it from the three. And thus, they only scored 23. It was 23 to 18 at halftime here. But... Man, I mean, you got to get the hats off to Ohio State for digging deep to try to keep Loyola from not making those runs because it always seems like, towards, especially towards the end of the season, Ohio State always let these big runs go and they go on for four or five minutes. And they did in this game too, but throughout the games, four or five minutes where they don't score a point at all. Yeah, and, and the, the game stayed... Uh, pretty competitive for what, like the first quarter of the game. Then Ohio state got a little bit of a lead. And then for the most part, uh, basically kept that lead throughout the rest of the game. Um, you know, it, it obviously fluctuates here and there, but what, you know, about a, about a 10 point lead for the rest of the game. They essentially held on to one way or the other, give or take mm -hmm. a few points here or there. This is a return of a terrible, uh, turnover game for Ohio state, 17 turnovers. Um, now that being said, they also forced 14, uh, both, both teams, quite frankly, both teams didn't, neither team looked very good. Like let's, yeah. Is, it is, was should ugly. we just call a spade a spade here and just say that neither team looked all that great? No, no, it's, well, no, well, Austin, I mean, this... they, they legitimately were playing good defensive basketball in this game. You know, I'm not going to no, sit I, here and say all of those were forced, but I, I, I a think good number a good of them were forced. I think I think that's a good point from Gangland. It looked like nervous basketball. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, I and I do agree with Austin. I it seemed more more of a bad offense than a um, than a good defensive um, game here. Now, I'm not going to say that that either team was bad defensively, but I think just offensively and, and, and the stats show that there. <laughs> they just 
teams just struggle to shoot the free throw. And then, and even Loyola in general here, like I said, they shot 26% from the, from the field, 28 behind the three, and they shot 30%. They were three for 10 behind the free throw line. It was just their worst game of the season here. And maybe some of it's due to Ohio State just getting up in their face and some of it just, it just weren't hitting their shots. Yeah, I just... But but I will take that W, though. Oh, for sure, especially after getting bounced in the first round last year. Uh, to, yep. to take the win here is obviously huge, or at least, well, I don't know about huge. Hu- huge might be overstating it. Uh, but it was definitely a relief. If nothing else, it was definitely a relief. Uh, the... Yeah, uh, I think I said it backwards before when I said Leola was a good scoring team. I meant that they were a good defensive team because that's uh, far more accurate. Uh, they, they were never a great scoring team. Uh, so from their perspective, this was a very Loyola sort of game. Uh, it was a uh, low scoring, high defense, um, although... Still, even then, if you go and you look through a lot of their games throughout the season, um, uh, uh, Ganglander, are you saying no that it is it's just him, Kyle? Are you having a hard time hearing me? No, I I hear you. I hear you fine. Okay. Um, I hope that's not screwing up the. Rec- um, that looks like the looks like the. Audio recordings doing fine, but that's totally local, so that makes sense. Um, the feed went black for a few seconds. The hell? Uh, that might be a Discord issue. Well, what, 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 why don't we do this, Jared? Um, uh, anything else from this game here, and then like, and then I could do a. I'll go ahead and do a quick ad break, and then maybe you. Disconnect and reconnect from um, from Discord. See if that might help out. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll reset a couple things. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in on Kyle, and he's gonna do an ad read. All right, cool. So we'll we'll take a we'll take a quick ad break here. I know Jared typically does this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to <laughs> see what I can do here. So Iron Bean Coffee Company. I mentioned at the the start of the episode why you should why you should purchase some of the great coffee that I have over there. Um, let me let me tell you about some of the flavors that they have, and I'll, I'll, I'll choose the ones that I've been having lately here. So I'll start off with the one I'm currently um, drinking, and that's the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. It is a medium roast. Um, they say here, live life fully. Do not go gentle. Rage Against the Dying of the Life. Um, the, this what? bean here is from... Co- this bean, this bean is from the um, Andean Mountains of Colombia with a slightly unique attributes and flavor tendencies. Coffee they've been getting from the um, Tolima region lately has been unique and exceptional. Um, it has notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. I tell you what, it's it's pretty good. I, I, I've been getting into coffee and Rage Against the Dying of the Light is definitely a a really good one and one too that i really recommend because i'm more of a light coffee drinker is the loki uh loki is their light roast it's an ethiopian uh, blend here uh they said here um it's a hundred percent arabica beans that gives you the edge and confidence to to slay the day uh the taste is smooth never bitter flavor flavors and subtle notes of citrus and floral and floral you can find your your unique coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. Um, be sure to check out all the other great, great flavors they have there. Again, that's ironbeancoffee.com, and that's Iron Bean Coffee Company America's local coffee roaster. All right, guys, uh, let me pop back out here. Uh, I if you, If the video cut out, that's because I reset it. Uh, so that, that may have been why guys, um, it's just on the discord side anyway. Uh, so that may have been why is, is the video back now? If not, maybe just refresh or leave the room and come back in that, that might help. 
All right, Kyle. So that that was the good news. Ohio State defeats Loyola. Um, then then came the Villanova game. Uh, oh. it, it, th- this is the number two seed in the in the bracket. Um, it, it it this this was not. I don't think ever going to go great for Ohio State. Um, no, I, I, they're, they're just they were just outmatched here. I mean, if we're if we're just being honest, they're just plainly simply outmatched here. Uh, they made a really nice run late in the game to get into it. Like they they got yeah they they were down by two points. It was uh, where where were we at? It was yeah it was about under six minutes left in the game, and Wheeler hit that three pointer. Uh, Ohio State down by two, sixty to fifty-eight. But then they went cold. <laughs> they went they, cold. They so basically they only... went like on a two-minute no well, bucket streak. Well, the final the final five minutes and forty-one seconds, they scored two points. Yeah, you're not you're not going to win games doing that, man. And they just they had some stuff where it was just just like falling the wrong way on the rim but, too. It, it was yeah, that, they. They had some good shots. They had some shots that should have gone through, and it was is just like it was not. It <laughs> the, the stuff just wasn't dropping, uh, which was the case uh, for Ohio State a lot in this game. Uh, they did shoot considerably better from the three point arc um, than than their previous game. Although, oh, good lord, how 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 could you shoot worse? Um, I, Kyle, one of the things I'm surprised about, because this is the first time I've taken uh, well, this, like maybe a half hour before the podcast started, was the first time I actually stopped to take a look at the at, at the at the box score. And one of the things I'm very surprised about is that Villanova barely shot better than three point uh, than Ohio State. Like I, I expected that discrepancy to be much bigger. It's 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 literally three percentage points. But the the difference is is how aggressive Villanova was. Starting off early and then throughout the game, Ohio State um, later on got more aggressive. But throughout the game, Villanova was just more aggressive team. And you look at the free throw line, Ohio State 6 for 11, not good, 54% shooting. But Villanova 17 for 20, 85%. 11 points there, difference there. That That's your ball game right there. It's It's the free throw line, getting to that line and making those shots as well. For sure. And Villanova's, I was going to say one of, but no, they're the best three point or excuse me, free point shooting team in, in all of college basketball. Not, not, not just that. If they continue, continue this trend, they will end up being the, the best free throw shooting team of all time in any year. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they just have some just insanely, um, great players on that team like their their point guard just amazing the Ohio State always struggled throughout the year there's two things that Ohio State struggled all year a point guard who can who can just be able to get passes has great um dribbling skills can shoot behind the three-point line and a seven plus footer center those are those were the two type of players Ohio State struggled here and and we got a when he got a point guard here who ended up scoring twenty points in this game. Yeah, um, Austin says the the game felt farther apart than it really was. Uh, for, first and foremost, Austin further. <laughs> Second, I, if you're gonna give me crap, I'm gonna give it back. Um, it, it, much much like the Loyola game. It is essentially, but but backwards, obviously. The game was close, although for the, in this case, it was close to maybe like the first eighth of the game instead of the first quarter. But then yeah. Villanova got a 10 point lead and then give or take. That 10 point lead basically stayed in place for the rest of the game, aside from a really nice run from Ohio State that we already talked about where they you know, got within two points, but then, you know, with three and a half minutes left in the game, proceeded only to score two more after that. Yeah. 
and man, it, it, it's tough. Uh, Iowa State was really in, was, well, not really in it, but there were times when you saw Iowa State really making these runs here on the back of Kyle Young. Kyle Young just brought this little extra energy. Gangland not was just, just the, saying that in the chat. Not just the, Vill not just the Villanova game, but also the Loyola game here. And man, when he, when he just, when he got hurt there, it was just a freak accident though. Got hit like in that cheekbone right under the eye there. And you just knew, you just knew, yeah, that's, he, he's done. That's, that's it for, for Kyle Young there. And it, it's, it was a shame too, because he was having so, himself a, a pretty darn good game. He ended, he ended up um, getting nine But once again, the, as is tradition, didn't show, does not show up in the stats at all. No, defensively, defensively. Yeah. He, he looked, he played really, really well. And it was just, yeah, it was just a shame to that. that he had to leave the way he did. Yeah, and you know, oh, people immediately and and I get it. it. It's it's Kyle Young, and there's a history there. But people immediately started talking about a concussion. To me, I feel like he was. I feel like he he wasn't so much like dizzy or whatever. I think it just like really fucking hurt. Like I think he took an elbow or a shoulder rather uh, to shoulder. the cheekbone, and. I think it was, he just took a really hard shot, like straight on a bone. And then of yeah, course, like you have those concerns with him with concussions. So of course they're going to, they're going to roll him through all of the testing anyway, because he took a shoulder to the head. So they're going to go through all of that anyway. Um, yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's just, it's all just in um, big our, precaution. Our medical for, correspondent for, down in the chat says yeah. that uh, it hit near nerves. I'm gonna trust um, him. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah, they're going to be be as precaution as possible, just because of his history that he's he's had here too. But you, I mean, you saw if anybody was watching the game, you saw like his eyes are like kind of big, like really big, and he was just it just didn't seem like he was all in when when um when he was um, walking off the court there. Yeah, uh, it's it sucks. Uh, I, I hope he it did does. not get a concussion. I mean, Kyle and I were literally talking during the last Loop Hoops episode where, like, we are theorizing the possibility that not only would Kyle Young not play in this tournament, which obviously he ends up doing, but we also, like, we theorized that he just might be done done. Mm -hmm. Like, he's had three concussions I mean, I said 18 months. They said it on the broadcast this morning. They said 12. Well, they said they 12, 12 months. months. What, whatever the number is, it's too many concussions to have in that short amount of time. And if, 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 if he got another one during this game, I'm, I, I mean, I don't need to finish that sentence. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, overall, I'm happy. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sad that Ohio State did lose, but I was happy to see them that they were, um, they were in the game, especially late into the game. They were competitive. It wasn't a, it wasn't a big blowout here that I was hoping it wasn't going to be. Kind of like when Ohio State and Alabama played, actually both times, one when Ohio State ended up beating them, and then the last time that they played, I just want Ohio State to be competitive against them that's kind of how i felt about this one here i want how say to be competitive villanova i'm gonna have to disown if, you for that statement and if it and if it's clo if it's close if it's close game and have a chance to win fantastic but just just knowing this team and my expectations from the, from this team especially as of late i didn't really have high hopes for them to beat villanova now when they were within two points there I was ecstatic. Yeah. Like I was, oh, I yeah. was in our chat here. I was in our chat. I was pumped up. I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I was being realistic. Yeah. And I mean, it, when, when it comes to this basketball team, I was holding out a little bit of hope. Cause like we joke again, we joked about it during the last sloop poops episode. This team is capable of winning or losing whatever game they're in. We've seen them lose to some terrible teams. We also saw on multiple occasions this season, 
this team defeating teams they had no business defeating. So, mm-hmm. like, in the back of my head, I was holding out a little bit of hope here. Um, but it it uh, it didn't it didn't come through. Um, they just I you can give them credit; they never quit. And I, I think one of the things that we did see in this tournament that has me excited um, is that we we did see um, Michi sort of returning to a bit of form without the mask on his face. He had some really nice shots. Um, he did. Yeah, no, Mad, they already are, buddy. Uh, but the, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I don't know. It's it's thanks to have gotten my hopes up right before the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. Like, cause I feel like that's all that happened. I feel like that's really all that happened there. It was just like, okay, Villanova got their lead. Okay. Ohio state keeps fighting. They're not going to let this turn into a blowout. We're going to keep this about a 10 point lead. And then, and then, yeah, get my hopes they're, they're, up just to yeah, just to let me down yeah i'm really excited for um to see what malachi does next year Man, yeah he's we, and we talked about especially january february well, time where who, well, where will he be doing it I, I really think he'll i really think he'll be um part, i think he me, should yeah, part of me thinks that he'll be he'll be back at Ohio State. Part of me does. I don't have a rhyme or reason behind it. I just I just have this feeling that he'll be back for Ohio State next year. He'll be the guy. He'll be able to display more of his athletic well, abilities. Yeah, but if he if he would come back, man, he, like man, it'd be it'd be so fun watching him ball out um, with a year under his belt. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but, but I, moving, but moving on to like next year, just man, you're 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 getting rid of, you're losing a lot of, you're you're losing a lot of a lot of players. I mean, you you do have Zed Key coming back, but Zed Key isn't a isn't the type of guy that you would rely to get seventeen twenty points a game though. Uh, yeah, who, it, there's there's not a there's not if 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 Brenham does leave. If there's not a guy on this team that you can point to and say, that's our score. That's our score mm-hmm. right there. Well, yeah. suing or towns come back. I have the same amount of confidence. I have that suing and towns will be on this team and participating next year. than I, that I do for, for Brenham. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They haven't played in two years. Why, why would I assume they'll play next year? Um, I don't know, but, but the Michi could be that guy. And I think there's, I, I really like the young talent on this team. I really, really like the young talent on this team. I really, really like the freshman class coming in. It'll, you know, it'll probably be ugly early, but no, I, I said points, not turnovers, Stuart. Um, I, I really like, well, he's a, he's a senior t- this year too. Yeah, I know. Um, he knows too. It, it, this is just our basketball thing that we do. Um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it, it'll probably be a slot again. This is like without Brenham. You they'll, they'll go out and they'll get someone, hopefully a point guard in, in the transfer portal. Um, at that point you have Zed key down low, you have, you know, Cedric Russell, Michi Johnson um, available a year older. And again, like they, they have a really nice freshman class coming in. Uh, I, I think there's reason for long term hope next year. I don't think it's going to be good early again without Brenham. If Brenham comes back, who knows? Like, mm-hmm. who knows? And you know, if they could go get a, and it doesn't even have to be a good center. I just want, I basically just want Kyle Young plus about four inches. You know what I mean? Um, 
yeah, Brunk, but consistent. Because, like, we got one great game out of Brunk, and that was basically it. And then, like, when he, the other times he played after that, he was he was fine. Um, but it it you know I I I, I don't even think Brunk is eligible to come back next year i don't know eligibility is too confusing for me right now but i don't think brunk has any eligibility left but i could be wrong because i just i don't know how how eligibility works anymore i just i just don't know um yeah it, but yeah. It, it, it it is it is what it is i suppose um we'll see we'll see what happens with the transfer portal we'll see how some of these freshmen develop during the off season and we'll see which one of the, the freshmen from this class coming in are able to contribute right away. Uh, we saw a lot of really good contributors um, f- freshman wise. Ob- I mean, starting with, but not ending at Malachi Brenham. So we, we don't necessarily, we'll, we'll see what happens next year. I'm, I, I'm just I'm I just kind of have to toss my hands up in the air and say I don't know it's because I really yeah. just don't even know who's going to be on the team next year so it's really hard to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else from this team here? Uh, I I think overall it was it was it was a fine year. Uh, they did they did get one victory. They did make it to the second round in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I thought it would be. Well, earlier on, I think when we were talking in January that they were we they were a Sweet Sixteen team, possibly an Elite Eight team, but as the season went along, that obviously wasn't the case here. But uh, I'm, I'm just I just I just worry with the amount of loss Ohio State will have this off season. Yes, Sun Card. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. No, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see how well Ohio State will do, and, and if they bring anybody through the portal next year. Right, and and I, again, I don't I don't follow basketball recruiting nearly as closely as I follow football recruiting, but they do have a six eleven center coming in next year. Is they he do. going to be ready to play right away? I uh, uh, he's he's currently listed at two ten, two hundred and ten pounds. Um, 210 pounds on a 611 fra- frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I that does not scream to me as someone who's ready to play college basketball right away. Right away. Yeah. So, but they they ha- but by the way, he's top 50 player overall in the country. Yeah, I was, I was just I, w- I was just going to say they have Gail coming in at shooting guard next year, who's 59 in the country. Bryce Thornton at point guard. So like if, if, if Ohio state needs a point guard and Ohio state needs a center, they have two top 50 guys coming in for those two positions next year. Now I don't know. I just don't know. Are those guys gonna be able to contribute right away? I don't know. Um, yeah. It is a good class. It is a good class, um, as Jared was saying. Um, they got they have five commits here, which puts them at fifth in the um, the twenty twenty two recording class recruiting class. And I don't, I'll follow suit with Jared. I don't really follow basketball that well. Just following the looking at quickly at the twenty four seven sports here. Uh, yeah, they got. Yeah, I think I think they have good players coming in, but yeah, just echo what Jared said. Can they come in and play right away, like what we saw Brent, um, Branham do? Yeah, and yeah, it's just like I said, it's it's also like a really well rounded class. Like they they have a forward, a center, two shooting guards, and a point guard. Like zero percent <laughs> <Chad. Austin>. zero. <laughs> My minus eight might be better. Yeah, minus eight might be better. Yep. All right, Jared. That's all I got. That's that's the end of the episode here. Any last right. words? Anything else words? Did you just say anything else words? Anything else? Any last words? Okay. <laughs> uh, no. 
Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I am not. I am not. I am 100% not on any sort of uh, F- Fire Holtman train. I'm not. Between the freshman class he brought in last year and the freshman class he's bringing in this year. If he can't do something in the next two years, then I think we can talk or maybe mm-hmm. the next one year. And we can like uh, to me, he's not even on a hot seat. Like to me, I, I'm not even going to evaluate Holtman until the end of next year. Yep. I'm realistically not. Um, you can't even get to the sweet 16. OK, so. Kyle, how many how many how many years are we now with Holtman? This was season number five. five. Season number five with Holtman. Now, let, let's keep let's keep a couple things in mind. One, during one of those, there was no tournament. There was no Sweet 16 to be a part of. It, it just didn't exist. So chances at a Sweet 16, actually four. Next thing to keep in mind, the his first two seasons. Like the whole reason, the whole reason, the entire reason why Thad Mata quote unquote retired. And by retired, I mean, got retired uh, when Ohio State retired Thad Mata. It's because he couldn't recruit anymore. And it's not because of Thad Mata that Thad Mata couldn't recruit anymore. It had to do with his health issues and negative recruiting and everything else. But the, the fact of the matter is the reason why he was pushed out was because he wasn't recruiting. I mean, just like facts on, you know, facts being facts, they weren't bringing in talent. So that tells you right away what Holtman inherited at Ohio State. Yep. Yep. But we'll see. We'll see here, Jared. All right. All right. I think that's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and hit, hit us out. Uh, sure. Uh, the, uh, no, that, that was, that's for the next episode that, that Nomad wanted the, but you know what? Screw it. Let's do it for both episodes, different song, different episodes, but, uh, let's do a Dan Auerbach song. Dan Auerbach, who, if you, if you do not know, is the lead singer of the Black Keys, we're going to do him both uh, today and Tuesday. So let's go ahead. Let's do that. Um, so he has a bunch of solo stuff out. This is not a Black Keys song. If you don't know, the Black Keys are who do our intro song. So um, let's let's do Dan Auerbach's song. Um, and then we'll come back. Well, we'll you'll, you'll see us tomorrow. You'll see us tomorrow. Um, and we'll do another one at the end of that episode as well. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Dan Auerbach. Mm-hmm.